Good morning, Rich Tyson here. Hey, I, I like to start these videos off often with a question. And so one of my questions uh, that I'd like to pose today is should you be confident or should you be humble? As I work with CEOs, business owners and the like, so often the answer to that question is that you should be confident. And uh, certainly confidence is an important aspect of running any business. That said, confidence can be counterfeited very easily into pride, arrogance, hubris, if you will. And so we need to be careful that we don't swing too far that direction. On the other hand, uh, should you be humble? There is certainly room for humility uh, in any uh, venture in, in the world, uh, running a business or otherwise. Humility allows us to be open-minded and to be able to understand uh, beyond our own perspectives. And so humility is certainly important, but humility also can be counterfeited into fear and uh, phrasing or or even uh, a sense of kind of poor pity me, I, I can't succeed. And so we need to be careful with both ends of the spectrum. The best answer, should you be confident or should you be humble, is to be both. Now, how can you make that balance? Well, let's talk about uh, confidence first. Certainly, as any of us run an organization, we need to give that positive attitude that, hey, we can do this, that there is nothing that is beyond our ability, no problem that can't be solved, and that we can lead with a quiet confidence. Uh, recently met with a client who is going through some reversals in the business, and there is no question that there's some fear in that, that he is worried about what will happen with his business. As he tries to engage his executive team, he needs to still convey that quiet confidence that they can solve the problems. Doesn't mean the problems go away, but that he poses them in such a way as, hey, these are challenges that we can overcome and be confident in, in winning the game, if you will. Uh, anything less than that sends a tremor through the organization that is uh, becomes fear and even uh, employees leaving the company, uh, key people saying, hey, uh, if, if the boss isn't confident, then we can't be confident either. And so it is really important that we maintain that equanimity and even in tough times that we can work our way through. Uh, is this a false front? Um, perhaps you could analyze it that way, but I look at it as a little bit of, uh, if you will, fake it till you make it but making sure that you don't, in, in an incident or a, a specific kind of problem, that you get too rattled. So confidence certainly is very important. On the humility side, one of the, the great blessings of having some humility as a leader is that you open yourself up to input from, from others certainly those within your organization, your key executives, but all employees. All of us are smarter than any of us. And so if we recognize that, that humility will allow us to listen and to observe and to learn from those who are around us. One of the dangers of being the top dog, if you will, the CEO, the owner of the company, is that we can get too much into ourselves, too much ego involved. Uh, hey, I'm obviously the smartest one here because I run this place. Well, the reality is, is always different. Uh, there is much to be said from all kinds of people within an organization. One of the great stories that is told, uh, and this is by uh, Warren Berger, who wrote the great book, A More Beautiful Question, he said, uh, how did the Polaroid camera come into being? Well, the answer was that uh, Land, who was uh, pulling this together, uh, was, or, or rather became the inventor of the Polaroid, was taking a picture with his conventional camera, probably a Kodak, and his little four-year-old granddaughter asked him the question, 
uh, why can't we get the picture right now? How come we have to take the film down and get it developed? And he thought about that and he thought, you know, it never occurred to me that maybe there was a way to develop that film within the, the camera itself. And that gave rise to the Polaroid. So here's a, a child who you certainly would not have thought would have any major impact on a business. And yet this sweet little girl came up with the key question that then led to the the process of R&D development of the Polaroid camera. Now, of course, today we've got digital cameras and, and this disruptive technology has is, is kind of taken away so much of regular film and, and Polaroid film. But the point is this, we often have the, the, both the gift and, and the problem of our own knowledge, our own expertise. When I know so much I put the blinders on and I fail to listen and learn from others. And so humility, that a willingness to listen is so important. One of the great books that has been written is uh, by, and I'm going to reach for it here. Excuse me for just a second. This doesn't make for great video, but nevertheless, I want you to see this book right here. It is called Daring Greatly. This book is written by Brene Brown. And she talks about humility a little differently. Uh, Brene talks about humility in terms of vulnerability. We need to, as leaders, be more vulnerable, more willing to have our ideas challenged and to be able to learn from others. And so should you have this vulnerability, this humility? Yes, you should. Should you be confident? Yes, you should. And in fact, confidence should go way beyond fake it till you make it. You should have that confidence that you can, can accomplish great things and do all the things within your business. So again, balance. Balance between confidence and humility. And so I, I hope this message resonates with you today. Not my best video reaching for books here, but nevertheless, I'll be a little vulnerable and uh, look forward to on the next one I do, maybe just a little bit better. Hey, thank you for your time. Have a great day.